Welcome to our presentation. This is Mike Erlene. And I'm Colleen Hoddenfield. We are the co-authors of the Format for Algebra program. We are very excited to share with you today our program. Our program is based on 10 essential ideas uh, or concepts and we define a concept as being generalizable and having universal application, adaptable to multiple contexts, um, something that works across the curriculum. Perhaps most importantly it is something that relates to your students personal lives. For instance most algebra books begin uh, discussing the idea of variables uh, which would be very challenging to uh, try to connect a teenager to that idea. Where we use the big idea of communication. We know that our students are chatting, uh, we know that they're texting each other on their cell phones, that communication is something they use in all our classrooms and is something that's very personal to them and it would be very easy to connect the student to that big idea. Once you have that strong concept, you can work on connecting the student to that concept. The most important thing is to come back to that uh, big idea every day. You want to mention it each day throughout the unit. That's the key, otherwise it gets lost. This slide shows the top 10 concepts that Mike and I have developed for this program. The first concept is communication. The first two chapters in, in our textbook are heavy into terms, properties, symbols. So we have um, decided to use communication as our concept for that. Um, luck is based on probability. We found that it was scattered throughout our textbook and we just decided that we would pull all of those problems together into one unit. Balance is the third one. That is our unit on, <clears throat> excuse me, on solving equations. Fourth one, relationships. We have linear relationships, dealing with slope, writing equations of lines, using data to make predictions. Fifth one, comparisons. That's our unit based on inequalities. The sixth one, alternatives, is our unit on systems. We're talking about efficiency and which, syst or which method is, is better to use. So we talk about the alternatives there. Uh, seventh one is growth. We are going to go into detail more later in the slideshow about that. That's our exponential growth and decay unit. Uh, eighth one is relationships that are now quadratic. Not everything in the world is, is linear. There are curves in, in our world and we deal with those relationships at that point. Ninth one is patterns. This is our unit on factoring. And the tenth concept is on modeling which puts together all the types of polynomial functions and other functions that they've learned throughout the book. The format model has a very natural flow to it. The bottom left shows the progression of the natural learning cycle in a clockwise fashion. If you've had format training, you are familiar with this setup. The right side shows the same cycle of learning in a linear fashion. This is how it appears in the teacher's guide of the Format for Algebra program. This was designed with the intent that teachers who have no format background could pick up our units and use them on Monday. Going through each part of the cycle, starting with one, the connect. This is the time when we're creating personal meaning. We want to connect our students to that concept. Uh, the second one, called attend, is when we're going to think about what just happened and discuss that. The third, called the image, is our time to put a picture to that concept. Um, the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, is, is definitely true here. We're going to create that picture in their mind, sometimes even on paper, and have them post it in the room for later. The fourth one, called the inform, is when we're doing our thing, when we're teaching. Uh, it's what we do best. It's what we spend most of the time doing. Uh, we spend the majority of our time in this as well as the next one called practice where we're practicing what we have been teaching. Mike and I have added some differentiated instruction activities into the book to give you some variety besides the usual worksheet um, book assignments that you normally and still will give to your students to practice. 
you, you stay at that informed practice part of the wheel or of this progression going back and forth between the two of them until you have learned and practiced all of the material needed. And then you move on to the sixth one called the extend where a project is used to interject their creativity, to show, to have the students show what they know in a different way. In the seventh part, we refine, we edit those projects. We want to make sure we put two heads together because as the saying goes, that's better than one. It's an important skill to learn for life as well. And then in the eighth one, we're going to perform or celebrate those projects and the entire unit. There's many ways you can do that and it depends on how much time you have to give to that. Mike and I have put many different ideas in the book as to different ways that you can do that performing and celebrating. We will take you through one entire unit so you can get a feel for how the 10 units work. Each unit starts with an essential question and has a poster to go with it. The posters state the skills to be learned and real world applications are discussed. Every unit begins with a general overview. This is the growth unit overview as it appears in the book. The linear format we start in the uh, left column with the first activity that connect. Going back to our earlier discussion, concepts need to be personal and have nothing to do with content. It's about the concept. This is our first impression and it always begins the unit with creating meaning. In the teacher's guide, you will find detailed instruction on each activity. This is the instructions for the Connect Activity for Growth, as it appears in the book. The Connect Activity for Growth is called Pass It On. This is an activity to show how fast disease spreads. Before class begins, you fill Dixie cups with distilled water and put a few drops of sodium hydroxide into one cup. As the students come in, Watch as they take a cup and sit down. You need to pay attention to who has the infected cup. Explain that they will get up and exchange their fluids. One student will pour the entire contents of the cup into the other student's cup and then pour half of it back. The students will sit down and wait to be tested. When the test is done, it will turn bright pink if the student has the virus in it. Uh, have students keep track of the exchanges and make sure that they have put them in the correct order. And then have the students figure out who was the originally infected person. This is an activity dealing with disease. It can be any type of disease. You can refer to the disease as HIV if you're comfortable with that. If not, you can use influenza, bird flu, mono, even the common cold can be used as the disease. After completing the Pass It On activity, we enter the second phase of the natural learning cycle, the attend. We're going to reflect on what just happened. We're going to step back and start asking, why did we do that? It's the beginning of the transition into the content. Throughout that Pass It On activity, students were filling out this worksheet that's in the upper right-hand corner where they record their partners and what the fluids look like at the beginning. Could they tell the difference? And um, Then they go into asking uh, what, what other things start out growing slowly and then begin to grow faster and faster until it's out of control. To Before they illustrate that idea, we'll go ahead and show them a video titled World Population. And in this video, dots are rep put onto a world map over time that represent one million people and so it goes back and starts from the earliest civilizations and starts kind of ticking along and putting one dot for every million of people and as as the years advance and the dots start to grow um, and increase 
uh, until the point where by the end of the seven minute video the whole world is just it's just rapidly exploding and this is just a really powerful representation of things that start growing slowly and then are soon out of control.